Sutra. Bhadrapala and Sixteen awakened lords who were his companions, arose from their seats and bowed at the Buddha's feet. He said to the Buddha, Commentary The name Bhadrapala is Sanskrit and means a worthy god, Xian Shou, and also worthy protector, Xian Da. When Bhadrapala first began to practice the way, he was very arrogant. There was once the Bodhisattva named Never Sighting who concentrated on the practice of being respectful to people. He bowed to whomever he met and then said, I don't want to slight you because in the future you will all become Buddhas. When he did this to the arrogant Bhadrapala, Bhadrapala scolded him. You low down idiot, he said. How can you be so cheap? You're worth this. And after that encounter, he even urged people to go beat up never slighting Bodhisattva. When never slighting would when never slighting would bow to this people, they would kick him while he was self prostrate. Sometimes they gave him nose bleeds, and sometimes they knocked his teeth out. From this display of arrogance, Bandrapala fell into the house. He remained there for a very long time before he began again become became a person. Bandrapala in sixteen awakened lots who were his companions. Awakened lots refers to bodhisattvas who rose from their seats and bowed at the Buddha's feet. He said to the Buddha, Sutra, we first heard the Buddha, the drama and left home life under king of awesome sound Buddha. Once when it was time for the Sangha to bath, I followed the custom and entered the bathhouse. Suddenly I awakened to the fact that water does not wash away the dust, nor does it cleanse the body. At that point, between the two, I became peaceful and attained the state of there being nothing at all. Commentary We first heard the drama and left the home life under King of Awesome Sound Buddha. King of Awesome Sound Buddha was the first of all the Buddhas. If anyone asks you who the first Buddha was, you now know what to tell them. Bandrapala left the home life under that Buddha. Once, when it was time for the Sangha to bath, I followed the custom and entered the bathhouse. Left home, people bathed every fortnight. That was the rule at the time. Suddenly, I awakened to the fact that water does not wash away the dust, nor does it cleanse the body. It was because of water that he became enlightened. He was awakened through the object of touch. At that point, between the two, I became peaceful. How is it water doesn't wash the dust? How does it not wash the body? That's the wonderful point. If you understand investigation, look into this and you too can awaken through the object of touch. Between water not being able to wash the dust and not being able to cleanse the body, he experienced tranquility. He attained the state of there being nothing at all. That means there was no object of touch. Sutra, to this day, I never, I have never forgotten that past experience. Having left home with the Buddha, I have gone beyond learning. That Buddha named me Bansrapala. Wonderful touch was revealed and I accomplished the position of the Buddha's disciple. Commentary. To this day, I have never forgotten that past experience. I've never forgotten how I was aware of the water when I entered the bathhouse at that time. Although Bhadrapala went through the house after that, he still never forgot his awakening. From the time of the Buddha, King of Awesome Sound, to the time when Bhadrapala spoke this was in Shakyamuni Buddha's assembly, is a period beyond reckoning. Never slighting Bodhisattva was just Shakyamuni Buddha in a former life, and uh, Bandrapala now in Shakyamuni Buddha's assembly 
was a person who in a previous incarnation slandered and had others beat and oppressed the never slighting bodhisattva. He was that Bishu who was so arrogant and full of self pride that he fell into the house. Having left home with the Buddha, I have gone beyond learning. That Buddha named me Bandra Pala, he says. Now I have left the home life and go be gone beyond learning. That Buddha who enabled me to go beyond learning named me Bandra Pala. Wonderful torture was revealed and accomplished the position of the Buddha's disciple. The object of touch disappeared, but a wonderful object of touch was revealed. When he says he is a disciple of the Buddha, he means he has been certified to the position of Bodhisattva. Sutra The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, touch is the superior means. Commentary the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, touch, the object of touch, is the superior means. Sutra, Mahakashyapa, purple golden light, Bhikshuni, and others arose from their seats, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, Commentary, Mahakashyapa, Maha means great, Kashyapa was his name. Since there were many people with the last name Kashyapa, the word great was added to indicate who was being referred to. Kashyapa means great total clan, Da Guishu. His ancestors had been a huge total with a map on his back and took their name from this incident. Maha Kashyapa is also known as a drinker of light, Da Yin Kuang. The light of his body seemed to swallow up all other kinds of light because they disappeared in the brilliance of his light. His personal name was Pipala, which is the name of a tree. His parents had no son and they prayed for one to a Pipala tree. As a result, they had a son whom they named in the tree's honor. Mahakashyapa was a fire worshipper. He cultivated the skill of smelting fire. There were all kinds of outside religions in India. Water worshippers, fire worshippers, and earth worshippers. The latter would bury themselves in the earth and if they remained alive for a certain number of days, they could become spirits. These outside religions were confused and confusing. And confusing. Purple golden light Bishuni, who was the Mahakashyapa's wife. By the time of Shakyamuni Buddha, Mahakashyapa was 120 years old and his wife was probably close to 100. Long ago, at the time of Kashyapa Buddha, his wife saw a Buddha image being battered by wind and rain, to the point that there was no gold left on the figure. She resolved to repair the temple but didn't have enough money. She also hoped to regard the image but that was even more expensive. However, where there's a will, there's a way. And this woman's heart was strong and true. Everywhere she went, he begged for money. She begged for money and over a period of years, she accumulated the equivalent of about 100,000 American dollars. Then she hired a goldsmith to regild the image. The goldsmith was moved by her decision to repair the Buddha image despite of her own poverty, and he offered to do the work for half the wage. So the two of them shared the merit and virtue of this. Soon the temple was repaired so that it didn't leak anymore and the Buddha image was regilded. After that, in every life, this woman's body shone with a purple golden light. After the goldsmith, who was Mahakashyapa in a former life, finished the Buddha image, something strange happened between him and the woman. Your heart is very good, he said to her. I'll take you for my wife and I will be your husband. 
not just in this life, but from now on, in every life, we will marry one another. That's why I guess that since Mahakashyapa was 120, his wife must have been at least 100. Even so, they were still very strong and active in their conservation. Mahakashyapa's wife cultivated the way and was satisfied to the fruition, and others in his retinue arose from their seats, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, Sutra in the past, Kampa in this region, and drew near to the Buddha named Sun Moon Lamp, who was then in the world. I heard drama from him and cultivated and studied with him. After that Buddha's extinction, I made offerings to his Sharira and lit lamps to continue his might. Purple golden light gilded the Buddha's image. From that time on, in life after life, my body was always been perfect and has shone with a purple golden light. The Bishuni purple golden light and others make up my retinue and we all brought forth the resolve for Bodhi at the same time. Commentary We should all remember the important point. Their relationship of husband and wife in life after life was not based on emotional loss. Rather, they married in every life and then cultivated together. They investigated Chen and sat in meditation. In life after life, they did the Buddha's work. They studied the Buddha drama and cultivated the way. Now, do you understand? Mahakashyapa explains, In a past compa in this re region, I drew near to the Buddha named Sun Moon Lamp, who was then in the world. I heard drama from him and cultivated and studied with him. A very, very long time ago, a Buddha named Sun Moon Lamp Buddha appeared in the world. The sun can illumine things in the daytime. The moon can light things at night. Lamps can shine day and night. Time, daytime represents existence and night represents emptiness. Thus is both nominant and phenomenon, phenomenon and nominant. Is also neither nominant and phenomenon, not phenomenon and not nominant. That means it's not attached to emptiness or existence. After that, Buddha's extinction and made offerings to his Sharira, the merit and virtue of making offerings to the Buddha's Sharira is equal to that of making offerings to the Buddha himself. I lead lambs to continue his light, so the Buddha Dharma would expand and flourish. The purple golden light gilded and the Buddha's Im gilded the, the Buddha's image. From that time on, in life after life, my body has always been perfect and has shown with a purple golden light. Mahakashyapa's appearance was very full and complete, and I'm sure his wife was also lovely. The Bishuni purple golden light and others make up my retinue, and we all brought forth the result for body at the same time. The open point was that they cultivated together. Their relationship was not based on emotional love. Sutra, I contemplated that the world's six sense objects change and decay. They were but empty stillness. They are but empty stillness. Based on this, I cultivated extinction. Now my body and mind can pass through hundreds of thousands of compass as though they were a finger snap. Commentary. Mahakashyapa continues, I contemplated that the world's six sense objects change and decay. He is basically discussing objects of mind, but here he refers to the six sense objects because the objects of mind have no shape or appearance. They are the shadow of the first five sense objects. The objects of mind exist because of the first five sense objects. If the first five did not exist, the objects of mind would not come to be, because they have no substance of their own. Forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch and dramas, these six objects interact, change and decay. They are but empty stillness. Their very essence is empty. There isn't anything there at all. 
Based on this, I considered extinction. I used the power of this contemplation, says Mahakashyapa, to cultivate the samadhi of extinction, which means I put an end to the sick mind consciousness and no longer dwelt in the discriminating mind. This is also known as the samadhi of the extinction of feeling and thought. Now my body and mind can pass through hundreds of thousands of compass as though they were a finger snap. This mind could endure through a, as long a period of time as hundreds of thousands of compass as though they were but an instant of time, the snap of a finger. Mahakashripa is actually in samadhi now. In the Samadhi of Extinction inside Chicken Food Mountain in Yunnan province in China. Sutra. Based on the emptiness of dharmas, I accomplished a hardship. The world honored one says that I am foremost in Dutta practices. Wonderful Dharma brought me awakening and understanding, and I extinguished all our flaws. The Buddha asks, about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, dhammas are the superior means. Commentary Mahakashyapa says, based on the emptiness of dhammas, I accomplished a hardship. The world only one says that I am foremost in dutta practices. Dutta is a Sanskrit word. It means ascetic dosho. It means to strike up your spirits and go forward with vigor to work hard and not be lax. There are 12 Dutta practices. Wearing rug robes, possessing only three robes, begging for food, consecutive begging, eating only one meal a day, eating a fixed and moderate amount of food, not drinking juices after noon, dwelling in an aranya, a quiet place, dwelling beneath a tree, dwelling in a, the open, Dwelling in a graveyard, always sitting and never lying down. Wonderful drama brought me awakening and understanding and I extinguished all our flaws. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. Buddha, you are asking each of us about the cause and conditions regarding perfect penetration. Our initial resolve which brought about your certification. As I have been certified to it, Dharmas are the superior means. The sense object of dharmas, this cause, is the best means.